Hey everyone, welcome. Welcome to um, Intro Psych, summer 2022. Uh, great to be with you all. Um, we're going to have a fun time this summer, I hope. So my name is Steve Jordans, by the way, for those of you who, who may not know me. Uh, I've taught um, the Intro Psych courses both half here uh, for many years. Now I mostly just teach this first half, Introduction to Biological and Cognitive Psychology. Um, I know this summer the second half, Psych AO2, is happening at the same time, and some of you may be in both courses. Um, that one will be taught uh, by a, a couple of graduate students that are teaching that course. Uh, the two will be very similar though and a lot of the um well like for example the top hat textbook you can use in both of those courses for so for that one cost that covers both of those courses and in fact what you'll see is a lot of the way we do things I think will be the same. I, I don't know exactly for sure how they're going to set stuff up, but um, often the courses are very similar. So once you're kind of comfortable in one, you're comfortable in the other. All right. Um, some things will be different. And one thing that will probably be different is the way we present lectures to you. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. Um, because... Um, well, I'm going to take you on a little bit of a journey of where I've been, where I'm going, and where this summer fits in, in terms of, of lectures. So, so let's kind of scoot along a little bit. Um, so yeah, let me give you, let me give you a little bit of history. Um, of course, before the pandemic... Um, I would typically teach in a, in a lecture hall. So you, you guys hopefully have seen the ARC, the Academic Resource Center. By now, it's a 500-seat lecture hall. And our way of doing things pre-pandemic was that I would lecture uh, twice a week, at least every now and then there would be a third, but pretty much twice a week for, for an hour each time, 50 minutes uh, each time. Um, and students could either physically attend the lectures, as you see them here, um, but we were also videotaping me as I did my thing, and those videos appeared later that same day uh, via something we call the web option. And so students had the option of attending the class uh, in person if they liked to be there while lectures were going on, um, or they could watch the lectures later online. Okay, so now the pandemic hits. And of course, we were already partly online, so it's in some way I could have just kept doing what I was doing, but not have the live lecture component. But I didn't do that. I changed some stuff. Um, and specifically, um, I hope you've now seen Top Hat. We should have given you a sense of that with the syllabus. Top Hat is where your textbook, for lack of a better term, is. Uh, I don't like to call it a textbook now because they've become something more than a, than a static textbook. Uh, but certainly that's where you'll do your reading about the content. You will be continually questioned about what you've been reading, which is really good for your study, for your memory, um, to, to retrieve the information you just learned. We'll be talking about that throughout. Um, but the the Top Hat platform also allows me to directly embed lectures into Top Hat. I kind of showing you a little bit of that over here where, you know, you might have been reading, blah, blah, blah. And then suddenly there's one of these. And when you press play, there's me inside your textbook ready to give you a lecture. Uh, and so that's what I was doing during the pandemic. Students would just go through this textbook. They would read as they go, and every now and then I would be there for a lecture. And one of the things I liked about the style a lot is I could do shorter, more targeted lectures. So rather than spending 50, 5, 0 minutes, you know, talking, when I, when I talk for that long, I'm going to call it an hour even though it's 50 minutes, when I talk for an hour, I present a lot of information and sometimes I move to two or three different topics as I go through that hour. That's a lot for you guys to kind of sit there, take in and organize in your minds and, and what we call consolidate. That's a lot of information as one of the things you'll learn in this course is humans can really only think about seven plus or minus two things at a time. Uh, to Plus or minus depends on the person. So some around five, some around nine things at a time. And if I'm telling you 12 new things in a one hour class, your mind just cannot grab all that. Uh, and so one of the things I liked about the pandemic style is I could give shorter lectures that were much more focused on a specific topic. I could try to make it really interesting, have a beginning, a middle and an end. And, and what I liked from your perspective is you could watch that lecture and then sort of think about it. And you would have time. I, I wouldn't have presented so much that you would be overwhelmed. There would be a, a smaller number of stuff that you could kind of wrap your head around. Uh, and then you can take some time to think about it and stew on it and, again, um, 
kind of get it consolidated into your mind. So I love these smaller lectures dispersed through the readings. The other thing, by the way, I did during the pandemic that was different from pre-pandemic is I didn't tend to repeat the textbook. So pre-pandemic, I would often be giving lectures that kind of said the same thing the textbook did. Um, at least some of that lecture uh, re, you know, reiterated what the textbook said. When I was in the pandemic style, I felt like it was more like a reading club, like we were reading together. And okay, you just read that. And now let me take this some new direction or let me tie this to something new or let me, et cetera. And so I wasn't often restating what you just read but rather I was jumping off from it in some direction. Um, that seemed to work all right as well. Okay, so, you know, at the beginning of the pandemic, I thought, hey, this new way of doing things, students seem to really like. I like the science behind everything I'm doing. It seems like a better way to teach and learn. Um, and I thought maybe this is what we'll do going forward. Okay, then something interesting happened. <laughs> um, and it happened more the fall of this year, fall 2021, when I was teaching the course. And now everybody had been in this pandemic situation for a year and a half. Um, and I started to hear something that I guess surprised me, although it shouldn't have from students. They wanted live lectures. They, um, some of them never had them. Some of them never experienced them. Those that did experience them wanted them back. Um, they felt like there's something that happens in that classroom when there's a live lecture going on that's cool and interesting and different and important. And so in the fall, uh, when I taught the course, I, I did it pandemic style, but because they were so hungry for lectures, I also did some optional lectures. Uh, now and then I did full one hour lectures uh, and invited students in person to come. There could only be like 60 at a time in a 500 seater uh, because of pandemic restrictions. But what I learned then is that some students really want that lecture experience. And so now I don't feel comfortable just doing the pandemic style. I had to find some middle ground and I have to use that middle ground this fall. Fall 22, they want us back in the class lecturing uh, as before. And again, now I see that the students want that. So, so I'm 100% behind that. But I started to think, well, I don't want to go back to the one hour lectures. So this will relate to you in a sec. Let's do the left side of this first. So as I've been thinking about what I want to do for the fall, I came up with the following thing. Now, the, you'll see there's a little sandwich here with a five-minute movement break uh, in between. So let me mention this first. I got exposed to some research that suggests that if students partway through a class just get up and move, a little bit of dancing, a little bit of exercising, whatever, there are all these cool movement break facilitator videos now. Um, but, if this, but if the class took a bit of time to stretch and move in the middle of the class, that led to better marks. Students did better in the class. That little break in the middle, you know, okay, Blue Jays, let's play ball. <laughs> Seventh inning stretch. Something in the middle seemed to really help their brains to deal with what, we're, what we do to you, which is, you know, just throw a bunch of information at you. Uh, and so what I'm imagining in the fall is I'm going to take those one hours and I'm going to break them into two smaller lectures. So a 20-ish minute lecture and then a movement break and then a 20-ish minute lecture. That's what the lectures are going to look like in the fall of 22. Um, and, and then we will take those 20-minute lectures that I, that I deliver and we will put them into Top Hat, um, you know, just embed them. Uh, in the right places they go. So now students who want to go to the lectures can go to the lectures, but they're still getting those smaller bites, albeit they're getting two bites in a row, but it's the best we can do. Um, and um, those who want to watch it in, in a sort of um, uh, pandemic way can do so uh, as they go through. So, so that's the idea. And when I figure it out, we need about eight mini lectures per chapter so about 20, that math doesn't work very, very well. So that would be 64 overall, not 24 overall. I got to change that. Um, that's okay. Cause there's eight chapters, um, and about eight mini lectures per. Okay. That's what I'm going to do in the fall. So now what am I going to do this summer with you guys? I'm going to start preparing for the fall. So, um, so first of all, by the way, we reused my original pandemic lectures 
a few times, they're getting a little old, you know, they're getting a little stale. They were from right at the beginning of the pandemic and some of the references and stuff just don't make sense anymore. Uh, and so we wanted to redo the lectures. And so what I decided to do is to redo them, but to redo them with fall in mind. And so I'm going to try to create that same thing, six, 64 ish. So about eight lectures per chapter that are embedded right in the chapter. So there won't be a live presentation of these lectures uh, in the summer, um, but they will be embedded right in the top hat uh, chapter, just as you found this one. So just as you came here and, and you saw this and you pressed play, as you continue to go through, you're going to find others. And, and these will now be ready for me to use in the fall um, when I have that all set. Okay. Sorry, that was a kind of a complex way of telling you the following. This is all you need to do um, as you go through things. Um, really, everything you need will be in that top hat shell. I mean, other than an ink work, is you should look at the syllabus and all that kind of stuff. And you obviously have uh, you know information to connect with activities and all that. But when it comes to the content, what you're actually learning in the course, that will all be within that top hat context. And so, you know, really what you want to do is, first of all, keep up with your reading. So just to be clear, the, the pace of things, we have a 12-week course and we have eight chapters that we're covering. And so what that means is we cover two chapters every three weeks. Okay, so about a week and a half per chapter. You really want to get on that rhythm. Um, you want to be reading chapters at that rate and keeping up with that. That's the first and most critical thing that, that you need to do as a student to do well. Uh, I need to do that too. So, so I need to stay ahead of you on that rhythm and make sure the lectures are, are there. Because as you go through, you know, you're going to read and you're going to run into my lectures. And so when you come to the lectures, you know, watch those lectures as you do your reading. And I'll try my best to make them integrated so that you know, that so that it all sort of flows and works really well. Um, you'll see all through Top Hat, even after my lectures, I will add some questions about what I just told you. And, you know, at some level, it seems a little weird. Well, you just told me something. Now you're asking me what you just told me. I think what you'll find as you go through it is the questions help you confirm that you understood what you just read or that you didn't understand what you just read, in which case you go back, you know, and check them out. And so the questions do, they also give you what we call retrieval practice. They give you practice pulling information out of your brain, not just putting it in. Uh, we're going to talk about that more, but that's really important. So yeah, go through, do your readings, watch the lectures when you hit them, answer the questions to test your understanding as you go. Um, and I'll get to that last point, but let me just slide over here. Um, just to be clear, you are responsible for learning everything in the textbook. So that includes all the little boxes on the sides or whatever. If it's in the textbook, it's fair game for an exam, chapters one through eight for this course. Um, and if it was in one of my lectures, it's fair game. Okay, so everything in the textbook, everything in the lectures are fair game. Um, chapters one to eight, of course. Uh, and just to let you know, on exams, about 80%, this is tricky because there's always going to be some overlap between my lectures and the course, but about 80% of the questions will come from the text and about 20% will come from my lectures. Um, so just, just to let you know, both of those are fair game. Um, the other thing I just want to mention is uh, as I create the lectures this time, I may occasionally re go over again what you learned in the readings um, a little bit. Sometimes I may have a whole lecture that just does that. If I think it was a really important point, I want to make sure you got it. I may just give you another presentation of that same stuff you just read. Um, or I may at other times just take it some direction that's completely different. So my lectures will really vary. What I do with those lectures will vary a little bit. Um, but it's all there to try to help you understand and learn as, as deeply as you can. Okay, now notice this last part. Seriously consider, consider attending office hours. They are fun and they are a great chance to work on your professional interaction skills. We will at least have one hour of office hours a week. We'll pr probably have two hours of office hours a week. I usually try to have you know, one sort of early in the day, early in the week, and one late in the day, late in the week, so that if you're attending the class from somewhere else in the world, we try to get a time zone that will work for you. My office hours are very chill. 
Okay, there, there are a chance to just kind of come. You don't have to have any questions. If you want to sit and lurk quietly and listen to others, you can. If you do come, you don't have to ask about stuff in the textbook. You can say, I watched a movie the other day where some psychiatrist did whatever. What do you think of that? Uh, we talk about just about anything in office hours. Uh, anybody who has a, a course-related question has first priority. Um, but aside from that, there are a great chance to just chat psychology and... and um, what I would suggest to you is a great chance to work on your professional interaction skills. So much is done now. Well, let me do it this way. Boof. So much is done now in this sort of way um, where we are having a lot of professional interactions online. And if you want to get good at this, if you don't want to be this guy, I don't know, maybe maybe he's good at it. I'm not sure. <laughs> but um, if you want to get good at doing this, this is a great chance to practice when you have office hours with profs. And I'll, I'll say a couple things that you guys won't continue to do, but I'll say them anyway. In the original, uh, when you come to office hours, if possible, leave your camera on. Okay, and I know some people say, oh, but that means I have to shower, or I have to put my hijab on, or I have to blah, 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 blah. Exactly, exactly. When you have to do an interview or when you have to meet somebody important in online stuff, you, you need to do that stuff, right? And so this is a chance to practice coming on, being a professional kind of person, interacting with your professor, interacting with your fellow peers, um, and really working on the skills of um, collaborating with people in a in a video conferencing kind of context um, and doing it in a, in a professional way. And, and so things like, for example, turning off your camera. We know why you turn off your camera because you only want to half pay attention, right? And you want to wait till somebody says marks and then you go, mm -hmm, what's that? And then you listen. Um, but you know, what's this mean to the person talking? You know, w imagine you were talking to somebody face to face and the moment they started talking, you took out your phone and you were playing around with your phone and you were just half listening in case they said the word marks. You know, they wouldn't like you very much. They wouldn't want to keep talking to you. They, they would prefer not to be in the same room as you. Um, that's the same sort of thing in professional context online. You know, even if you're not talking, you should have your face there. You should be clearly attending. You should not be distracted with other stuff. You should be plugged into this moment and interacting with other people in this moment. That's what I suggest you use office hours partly to practice. Now, why should you bother? I'll tell you why. Because two or three years from now, you're going to be applying to some program and, and you're going to, and it's going to say, you need a letter of recommendation from a professor. And you'll be like, ugh, okay, what do you want in that letter? Well, they want somebody who knows you all right, who's, who's seen you interacting in an academic sort of context, in an intellectual kind of way, um, who's had direct interactions with you. That's what office hours are great for. You know, put on your little scientific geek um, hat. I, I use geek as a high term of endearment, by the way. Come to office hours, ask geeky questions. Um, then if you come to me and say, hey, Professor Jordans, remember me? I was in your office hours a lot and I need a letter for whatever. Could you, could you write a letter where you speak to whatever? If I know who you are and if I've had interactions with you, I can write you a letter. Uh, and that's super, super valuable for you. But I cannot tell you how many students get to fourth year having never talked to a professor and then saying, can you write me a letter? And I say, well, I don't know you. All I know is you're great. I can write you a letter, but it won't help you. Um, but that's all I can do. So this is a good chance to start getting to know professors, interacting them, getting to know your fellow peers, um, all of which is really, really kind of important. Networking. Okay. All right. So I went on for a little while here. Um, the, the, the big point I want you to take from all this is, yeah, as far as lectures go, they're just going to appear in the textbook as you go through, read them uh, as you go, as you read them, watch them as you read. Um, and, and everything should be kind of cool. And as you're doing that, keep an eye out for office hours. Consider coming at least to the first one or two, get a feel for them. You'll realize they're pretty chill. And then uh, you can decide what you want to do from there. But I, but I highly recommend you check them out. Alrighty, you will see me all through this this textbook. Um, I live here this summer. Um, so all cool. I hope you all really enjoy the course. I hope you enjoy this sort of top hat style of learning. And um, I'll be here. We'll be having fun this summer. Alrighty, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.